a fairly standard little vehicle like off eBay. I'm not sure how you'd describe this. It kind of it presents the image of being a little sort of off-road spotlight type thing, but I think it's more decorative than anything else. And these are available in a variety of colours, so ultimately I guess that does mean it's decorative unless you particularly like off-roading with blue light, which is what I chose here. And if we connect this up to the power supply, for a start, the first thing I'm noticing here actually is that uh, it's got very similar construction uh, to some of the little LED downlights. With that lens, it screw yeah, it does, it screws in the end and uh, clamps the lens in, the end plate. And I've opened one of these before. I'm pretty sure I've opened a very similar unit and it contained a, a little electronic power supply you'd normally associate with an MR11 or MR16 LED lamp, which would make sense because it is around about the same voltage range. So let's uh, bring some power in. Actually, you know what? Let's measure this properly. Let's bring a voltage meter in. And we'll bring in a little dinky current meter as well. So let's uh, set this to the 10 amp range optimistically that it's going to draw around about there. Well, let's see. It w actually, it would. It? Uh, if it was a, if it's got a proper switching regulator inside, it will probably go up to at low voltage. It will go up to about the 350 milliamp if it is a one watt LED, and then the current will go down as the voltage goes up to compensate. So let's uh, get this on here, and we'll get this on. Here, that and there, and then we'll start ramping the voltage up. And I've got the crocodile clips on this meter, so we can actually monitor the voltage in this as well. So that'll be the positive, and that will be the negative. So at the moment we've got 0.9 volts, no current, which you wouldn't expect current at that. So let's turn it up progressively until it starts to light, keeping the clips away from each other. I've just clipped and unclipped it completely. Okay, let's try that again. The wires are very thin. This is what you'd expect. Wire being kind of expensive these days in terms of copper, if it is copper. So it's starting to light, it's starting to glow at about 2.5 volts, which is the typical voltage you'd expect a gallium nitride LED to start conducting. As I turn it up for... I can tell I'm getting actually only about 17 milliamps at about, f let's see, let's push it up to 5 volts. Um, this isn't reading much because I'm only getting 24 milliamps in the bench meter. And it's progressively rising as I turn the voltage up. But there's no, it's not self-regulating. At this point, I would have expected it to be drawing the LED to be running at a full one watt if it had active circuitry. But the way the current's climbing uh, as I turn the voltage up. All right, so it's approaching 12 volts. And the current is 90 milliamps. And that rose so linearly. I think this might just have a resistor inside it. What happens if we start pushing it up to 13.8? No, the current just keeps... Uh, let's push it up to 14. And the current just keeps claiming. So uh, it's about 108 milliamps. 110 milliamps if we want to go by this, but that's just not uh, as accurate as the, the power supply here. Okay, let's open it up and see what's inside. I'm thinking a resistor. So for a start, let's get these leads off and uh, remember to put the little power supply, the little uh, meter, back to its uh, normal position because you don't want to leave your meter in the uh, high current setting or any of the current settings just in case you have a little instant next time you use it. Right. So, the construction of this, uh, you usually go in from the end here. So this comes off and usually holds the lens. And there's the LED. Ah, there's a, what looks like a resistor. Uh, let's hike this out. Where is a screwdriver to hike this out? Is it glued in? I think it is. It's glued in. It's got the thermal glue in it. That makes sense as well. That's quite good. 
let's uh, liberate these little screws. Hold on, I'll bring you down closer to the action. Do you see the little resistor there? Hmm, suspicious. I think that may be all there is in this. And the back will really just be a mounting system. It comes to this bracket here with a... Uh, I was going to say with little ridges to actually click into those, but it doesn't. It, uh, it really is just going to clamp on that. Is it going to be waterproof? Probably not. Yeah, it's just the wires going straight in. I quite like the little cup though. Uh, it's the wires going straight onto there with the resistor. So what value is that resistor? Uh, let's be optimistic and say 200 ohm range here. Actually, this is where I could have done with switching back to my normal probes. So let's do that. And I'll zoom back out again here so we can actually see the meter. Normal probe is back in. And probe that resistor. Oh, uh, what we're getting here, not, not a lot, unless uh, I'm just not making a good connection down here. It might be that cruddy solder uh, 0.099k, so it's about 99 ohms. Let's see if I get a better connection this time. See about 100 ohms that resistor? Yeah, that looks like a 100 ohm resistor. So it's a 100 ohm resistor in, st in series with a standard LED and it's not running at anywhere near the sort of 1 watt or 3 watt rating of that. Um, it's, it's an interesting approach. I suppose you could put, well I was going to say I suppose you could put a Luxian style LED in there if you wanted, if you wanted to repurpose this, but I don't know if there's any point in that. It's so cheap. I mean, this was a, what was the listing? <clears throat> this was 99p plus 50 pence shipping, so roughly about £1.50, so nothing really major. It was described as hot 12 volt blue LED day spotlight motorcycle car truck fan bike, and it came from, oh god, Mandy XIAO XIAO 2011. Okay. And they've got them in the full range of colours, so uh, it's a, it's a reasonable, reasonably functional little thing. It is. It's very simple. It's not exactly going to fail, is it? It does offer the possibility you could uh, bridge over that resistor if you wanted, or bridge it out and add an external resistor, uh, probably just by soldering the leads directly onto the LED leads. Uh, and that would let you use either your own regulated supply or run a multiple of them in series with one resistor or just adapt the resistor for low voltage use. It's reasonable enough. It's a quite a, you know, it could be repurposed, uh, particularly the white ones, just as a little downlight that could be adapted for low voltage or low current use. It's kind of very adaptable in that way. So another of these little generic modules that you can get off eBay that are sort of ripe for modification.